In terms of architecture, Abu Dhabi and Dubai are some of the most innovative places in the world, always pushing things a step further in order to stay one step ahead, and we can see proof of this in their skylines, taking inspiration from classic or iconic buildings from around the world and bringing them up a notch. Marina Bay Sands in Singapore, the Gate Towers in Abu Dhabi, Twisting Torso Sweden, Kayan Tower Dubai, The Gherk in London, The Mac Park Towers Dubai. Sydney Opera House Australia, Zayed National Museum Abu Dhabi, Elizabeth Tower London, Ayakub Tower Dubai, Chrysler Building New York, Business Central Towers Dubai, and the Leaning Tower of Pisa Italy, Capital Gate Abu Dhabi. Capital Gate is almost three times taller than the Tower of Pisa, and whereas the Tower of Pisa's top overhangs its base by around 13 feet, Capital Gate's top overhangs its base by a whopping 108 feet. In order to achieve this and to do it safely required some incredibly innovative engineering that may not only change the future of Abu Dhabi but the future of skyscraper engineering worldwide. No before you go! Foundations one of the main problems occurring due to the immense overhang is the one side of the building is pushing down on the ground but the other side is actually pulling up. To overcome this problem they used a total of 490 concrete piles 3.25 feet in diameter. On the overhang side 245 66 foot long piles were sunk into the ground. These piles pushed the overhang's forces into the ground on the other side. 245 98 foot long piles piles sunk deeper into the bedrock to resist the stretching forces trying to rip the foundations out of the ground. All these pilings were then unified by a 6.5 foot thick heavy reinforced concrete slab containing around 247,000 cubic feet of concrete. Core the next problem to overcome was the core. A normal skyscraper uses a solid core to keep it upright, but on the capital gate the core would be compressed on one side and in tension on the other, and would therefore just shear and crumple under the stress. So once again they had to discard the conventional and innovate. Structural engineers came up with an ingenious solution. They built the reinforced concrete core to lean in the opposite direction to the building. As the building grew in size, its lean pull the core straight, compressing the core rather than trying to shear it off. Using a technique called jump forming, the crew would set up the steel bar reinforcement work and the shuttering on a 13 foot high section of the core during the week and then pour the concrete on the last day. Due to the intense temperatures this concrete had to be poured at night to stop it drying out too quickly. Then the whole platform and former could be hydraulically lifted up another 13 feet to add more compression to the core every five sections of the core are post tensioned using steel tendons. These tendons were threaded through precast ducts overlapping each other on the joints. A total of 146 tendons were used. Once threaded through the ducts, they lock off both ends and then, using a hydraulic jack, apply tension to each cable individually. The tension they applied was equivalent to five family cars pulling on the cable. To post tension the core, they used nearly 44 times more cable than was used on the Golden Gate Bridge. External Structure the external structure didn't just have to lean, it had to twist and bend, mimicking the contours of a wave and desert sand dunes. It also had to be strong and as thin as possible to maximize internal floor space. So engineers were looking for something thin, curved and strong, and the humble chicken egg is what came to mind. However, engineers couldn't replicate an eggshell for the capital gate, but they could replicate the principles of how it works by using a diagrid. A diagrid is a diagonal grid or mesh of steel that wraps around the core. This mesh is made up of 720 X-shaped sections called cruciforms, all linked together to distribute weight and load evenly over the whole structure. Because of the building shape, each of the 720 cruciforms was a unique shape, weighed up to 16 tons and had to be joined with millimetric precision. Glasswork 
It was clear from the very start that the curvy facade of the Capitol Gate could not be clad in curved glass. It would be too complicated and too expensive to get all the curves exactly right, so they used triangles. Every 26 foot by 26 foot diamond shape of the diagrid was clad with a module of 18 hinged triangular glass panels, making a grand total of 26,000 individual panels. The building shape and construction method meant that as they continued to build and add weight, the building itself continued to move. This meant that the glass modules had to have a tolerance built in to allow for this movement and to also allow for thermal expansion and contraction, whilst at the same time remaining watertight. The tolerance that was needed was huge in terms of glazing systems, 20 millimeters. Engineers had to once again design a solution to this problem and they came up with a double seal system. The interior seal is one continuous piece of rubber attached to the inferior module. The exterior seal is two pieces of rubber, one attached to both modules with drainage holes on the apex to drain any water that may get in between the two. Internal Diagrid in order to reduce the toppling effect, architects wanted to reduce the weight at the top of the building and they did this by adding a funnel shaped atrium to the top 18 floors. This lessened the eccentric weight and also brought in extra sunlight to the upper floors. However, the unconventional design of the capital gate uses the floors to join the core to the diagrid and dissipate the load. By cutting a hole in 18 floors, they were definitely reducing the weight, but they were also reducing strength. Engineers came up with another the clever idea to overcome this problem by building an internal diagrid. This diagrid, in a similar way to the exterior one, would join the 18 floors together on the interior and then to the core via six massive 26 foot high steel connecting plates. Do you like Capital Gate's aesthetic or not? Do you think it's a new wonder of the world or a waste of money? Comment below! And regardless of what you may think, you have to praise the architect's ambition to strive for something new and challenging, no matter how problematical it is, and the engineer's ability to accept the challenge and solve the problems. Please give us a like if you enjoy this video and subscribe for more.